Hello! After a lot of speculation and anticipation, the official Women's Prize for Fiction Mom List 2024 has been announced, and I have all of the books right here in a great big box that the Women's Prize has kindly sent me, but I've not opened it yet, and I don't know what the long list is because I thought it would be more fun to open the box on camera, take out each book one by one, and give my reaction to them, and we can discover the long list together. Uh, just you, me, and Miss Vivian Lee. <laughs> Sometimes people ask who is on my t-shirt, and today it is Vivian Lee from her 1940 London set film, Waterloo Bridge. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. I highly recommend watching it. Anyway, I'm gonna open this box because I'm chomping at the bit to find out what is on the long list and there are some books I'm hoping and expecting to see on the list. Uh, you may have seen my uh, predictions video with Anna that uh, we posted last week but here we go. I'm going to open the box. So, okay how to do it in a way so that I don't see all of the books on top. Okay. Ooh. Okay, there's some brown pa packing paper on top, so excuse all the scrunching. <laughs> okay, gonna reach in take out the first book, which is, oh, Kate Grenville's uh, Restless Dolly Maunder. Uh, yeah, I, um, I've heard about this book. I've read a novel by Kate Grenville before, really enjoyed it. And uh, so, yeah, I'd, I'd be keen to, to read this and, and see what it's like. Oh, so great. So I'll go through and talk more about these books um, individually um, after I discover what each of them are um, and, and do a little bit of research about them because I may not know what all of them are. Oh, the next one is Brotherless Night. Um, yeah, I've, uh, I've seen this book before, but I don't really know uh, anything about it. So this is quite exciting. Okay. Ooh. What is next? And Then She Fell by Alicia Elliott. I've not heard of this at all. So, okay, here's my first big, like, absolute surprise. Not heard of that. And... It's next, so paperback, uh, A Trace of Sun by Pam Williams, another book I've not even heard of before. Um, so this list might be a complete and total surprise to me. <laughs> uh, what is next? Oh, Eight Lives of a Century Old Trickster. Um, yes, I have heard of this book and have been wanting to read it. Um, I think it's about a uh, life of um, sort of like that is reincarnated and following someone through multiple lives and uh, yeah, or, or there's, is there a mother that sort of believes that she's had multiple lives? I can't quite remember, um, but I had been meaning to read this. So yeah, very glad to see this on the list. Next up, there's, ah, The Ren, The Ren by Anne Enright. And um, so this is one that uh, both Anne and, Anna and I were predicting <laughs> would be on the list. It was the very first novel that I read at the beginning of this year. Um, such a good experience. So yeah, that's really exciting to see. And ah, River East, River West, yay! Oh, I'm so glad um, this is listed. I, I read this just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's a debut novel, really beautifully written, uh, really emotionally powerful. It's both a coming of age tale and a tale of um, a girl's, um, stepfather um who she disapproves of but you get his backstory as well um set between uh china and shanghai and yeah um really great uh story of family so yay that that is so good to see um, the maiden by kate foster uh, another novel i've not even heard of so okay that's really exciting to see and Ah, Soldier Sailor by Claire Kilroy. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, did Anna predict this? I think she did. A number of people have, and a lot of people have loved this book, and it's one of those novels that, yeah, I, I 
have had a copy of it ever since it was first published. I keep meaning to read it. So many people say it's great, um, but I've just not got around to it yet. And now I have the perfect excuse to finally read it. So that is great. Uh, and ooh, a very short one. Uh, oh, yay! Western Lane by Chetna Maru. I've not seen the paperback yet. Oh, okay, that's really cool. Yeah, lovely. Ah, ha, ha. Uh, Anna's going to have to to read a novel about squash now, <laughs> and a lot of people. But like uh, you know, Anna said she was um, uh, hesitant to read it, and um, because it's about sport. Uh, but I can absolutely assure you, uh, it is so good, um, so powerful, uh, so beautifully written. A great novel about family. Um, so it's not just about sport. And yay! I'm so happy to see this on the list. Next up, there's, oh, Ordinary Human Feelings by Megan Nolan. Uh, now, neither of us had predicted this, but um, somebody commented uh, on our video um, saying that they thought this should be listed. And uh, I think Anna responded saying, oh, I can't believe I forgot about that book. So yes, I've not read this yet, um, but I've been wanting to and been wanting to read something, anything by um, Megan Nolan. So that is great. Uh, what's next? Uh, okay, Hangman. Um, I, I've seen this book in bookstores before. Um, I think it uh, looked really curious. I love the, the vibrant cover of it, but uh, yeah, I don't really know anything uh, about it, so I'm going to have to look that up before talking about it. And uh, oh, Enter Ghost by Isabella Hamad. Oh, great. Yeah, Anna predicted this one, and I think it sounds so good. I just never got a copy of it, so I'm very happy to have a copy of it and read it now because yeah it uh yeah sounds so fascinating and powerful and relevant and uh so yeah really looking forward to reading this so yeah don't have a very high hit rate how many more are there that's three i think i feel three <laughs> Going around in this box oh night bloom uh by peace adzo medi um yeah i've not read this yet um but i did predict this would be on the the, the list because um just seemed like a very likely choice the story of two cousins in ghana um following them um throughout their lives as they grow apart and yeah i've just heard such great things uh, about this novel so yeah i'm really looking forward to finally getting around to read it now and uh ooh, it's another short one uh, oh, In Defense of the Act by Effie Black. Yes, um, I've, I've seen this book before and I've um, been interested in it, um, but I've not read it yet. And so, yeah, great um, to have an excuse to get to it. I think there is just one book left. Uh, the Blue Beautiful Worlds by Karen Lord. Nope, not heard of it. <laughs> wow, uh, gosh, yeah, I've, I've no idea. Um, so I think those are all of the books. Let me just check and yep, uh, that's, that's all the books. That's the 16 novels on the Women's Prize long list. Uh, let me go and have a look through them and, uh, and, and, and find out some details. And then I'll come back and talk about each of them a bit more individually and discuss a reading plan going forward. Uh, so the short list of six books is going to be announced on April 24th. And then the winner of both the fiction and the new nonfiction list uh, will be announced on June 13th. And um, so that is the time frame we are working in. Um, if you want to try to read all of these books, if you want to be ambitious like that, or if you want to pick and choose which books you want to read. Okay. I've gone through and had a proper look through this exciting group of books and one of the most surprising things to note right off that there are a lot of famous prominent authors that didn't make the cut. There's no Ann Patchett or Zadie Smith or Linda Grant or Lauren Groff or Sandra Newman or Jasmine Ward. There is Anne Enright and Kate Grenville and some other authors who have been uh, listed for the prize before, but there are a lot of debuts as well. I think there are seven debut novels uh, or, or maybe eight um, if you count. I think Alicia Elliott published a book of nonfiction before. I think this is her first novel, so maybe eight debuts. So it's really exciting to um, see a lot of new 
voices and uh, new to me authors that I'm looking forward to exploring, but also great that a lot of these authors and stories are set in many different places around the world. So you have um, some stories in Canada, some in Africa, uh, in the Middle East, in East Asia, in Sri Lanka, in Australia, in the Caribbean, um, so from all over. There's also a wide range of subject matter of uh, stories that involve politics and uh, science and art and war and families and a wide range of genres. Uh, so there's a science fiction book in here, uh, there's a thriller, um, there's some historical fiction. There are stories about returning to one's roots and forging a path for yourself in the world. Uh, so this is all really wonderful to see. I think the shortest book on the list is Western Lane, um, which is only 161 pages. And then the longest uh, is only 380 pages, A uh, Trace of Sun. Um, so there's no great big 800 page chunksters on this group. Now I'm going to go through each book and give brief descriptions of them, starting with Hain Man, uh, which is about a man who returns to sub-Saharan Africa after living in America for a long period of time to find that no one there remembers him except someone he encounters who calls him brother, um, but he has a real brother that he's going to search for. Um, this has been called an existential journey and a tragic comic farce. Maza Mengiste, who wrote The Shadow King, said of this book that it's a gripping story of homecoming and loss, ruthlessly honest and startlingly beautiful, profound and unforgettable. In defense of the act, this is a novel about a woman who's a scientist and who's queer and who has a special interest in the study of suicide and the practice of it. Uh, so it's meant to be a really emotional journey and look into this subject matter. This book is very highly rated by a lot of readers that I follow. And then she fell, a novel about an indigenous woman in Canada who believes that her life should all be coming together, but really it's all falling apart. Uh, it's about mental health and motherhood and drug addiction. The Ren the Ren, a novel about a young woman named Nell, who's a journalist who's just fallen in love and her mother Carmel and um, there's actually two novels uh, in this list um, with main characters named Carmel and um, both Irish novels of co course uh, but uh, it's also about uh, Carmel's father uh, who was a famous poet and you get bits of his poetry interspersed um, with their two stories and it alternates between their two stories. There's a wonderful skewering of arrogant male writers uh, in this which is a delight to see. The Maiden, this is the story of a woman in the late 1600s in Scotland whose lover is found dead and she is accused of his murder and it becomes a big scandal and we follow her story. It's based on a real historical case. Brotherless Night, this is about a teenage girl in Sri Lanka who wants to become a doctor but whose plans are disrupted uh, amidst civil unrest and war and uh, the larger politics of the country. Britt Bennett, who wrote the wonderful novel The Vanishing Half, says of this book, it's a heartbreaking exploration of a family fractured by civil war. This beautiful nuanced novel follows a young doctor caught within conflicting ideologies as she tries to save lives. I couldn't put this book down. Restless Dolly Maunder, this is about a woman who's born at the end of the 19th century in New South Wales, who is determined to own her own life um, despite uh, having a husband and family. I, I believed it's based on Grenville's uh, own ancestry and also uh, there are absolutely beautiful end papers in this edition. Enter Ghost. This is about an actress who returns to her family's homeland in Tel Aviv after living away for a long period of time. It's about reconnecting um, with her sister and her heritage 
message, uh, but also getting involved in a production of Hamlet that's being staged in the West Bank. Soldier Sailor, uh, this is uh, about a woman's internal monologue um, as she is speaking to her newborn who she loves very much, but she's uh, also feeling this, this crisis um, that being a mother is sort of stifling her creative life. Uh, it's meant uh, to be very moving, uh, but also quite funny in its narrative. Uh, and also, uh, this was the hardback copy that I've had for ages, so quite a contrast between the two editions. Eight Lives of a Century-Old Trickster. Uh, this is about an old woman in a retirement home. Uh, that's why I thought it might be about a, a mother um, who's recounting the story of her life, um, but the person listening realizes that uh, her journeys and stories are so fantastical. Um, it couldn't just be a single person's life um, and that she might have lived multiple lives. <laughs> this sounds so intriguing. River East, River West. This is the story of a teenage girl in Shanghai who's half American and half Chinese, um, but who has a real fascination with America and Western culture and wants to be a part of it uh, desperately. But uh, her American mother uh, marries a Chinese man who she disapproves of. But then uh, we get the story of his life and his development and how their lives intersect. I found this such a moving story. The Blue Beautiful Worlds. This is a novel about how our planet has been altered by climate change. But in this story, uh, we've been being observed by civilizations in distant galaxies. And it's about a number of people who try to forge connections with these different civilizations out in uh, the, the universe and how there's a pop star that has a special ability to possibly unite people. It sounds absolutely wild. Western Lane. This is about an adolescent girl who wants to win a regional squash tournament, but she's also recently lost her mother. And it's about her family's uh, dealing with this grief uh, or not speaking about it. And it is so emotional how it follows her journey. Um, it's really subtly and beautifully written, and I found it so powerful. Night Bloom, uh, about two cousins in Ghana who, from a young age, they're more like sisters and best friends, but as they get older, they grow apart and it follows their different journeys. Ordinary Human Failings, um, this is about a journalist in London in the 90s who investigates a case of a child that's found dead on a housing estate, and people begin to suspect uh, a reclusive Irish family, um, including a woman named Carmel, and uh, following their stories and uh, the mystery of uh, their background. Also, my friend Sarah, who has the booktube channel Hardcover Hearts, I just read this novel recently and talked about it in a video and how she was hoping it would make the Women's Prize long list. And here it is. I've also had Megan Nolan's uh, debut novel, Acts of Desperation, on my bookshelves um, since it came out. So uh, I might try to read this novel as well as her more recent book. And finally, there is the novel A Trace of Sun, um, which is set in Granada and follows a boy named Rafe whose mother um, leaves uh, the, the island for England uh, to try to find a better life. And she returns many years later and finds um, the, the divide between her and her son um, has really widened. Um, and also it's about him discovering a secret about his mother's life. Um, the author, Louise Hare, who wrote the, the wonderful novel, uh, This Lovely City, um, writes of this book, it's an un unflinching look at one family's experience of immigration, exploring mental health, identity, and family. So these are all of the books on the long list. There's quite a lot to choose from. I'm not sure where I'm going to begin. Uh, as I mentioned, I have only read three of these books so far. So I'll probably begin with one of the books I've been really meaning to get to, like Soldier Sailor uh, or Night Bloom uh, or Eight Lives of a Century Old Trickster. But there are some new ones that I'm so intrigued by uh, like the the blue beautiful worlds uh, and brotherless 
night. Uh, so, so much choice. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure where I'm going to begin. I think I'll probably read more by whim, uh, but hopefully read most of these uh, before the winner is announced in June. And uh, the shortlist will be announced on April 24th. So I'd love to hear what you think about this list of books, uh, if you've read any of them, if you would recommend any of them, uh, or are you interested in reading any of them now, or are you ambitious and want to read the entire long list? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And this is so exciting. I'm looking forward to reading and discussing all of these books with you over the next few months.